I work bad hours. 8 o'clock until 3 in the morning. Every day during the week. I don't get sleep. My feet kill me. So do my arms. Constantly carrying a bucket filled with soapy water and pushing a mop around a colossal building. And I have to empty all the trash cans and put the new trash bags in them. Boring stuff. I also have to mention my pay. $11 an hour. Not bad, just not great either. The only good thing about the job is that I get to listen to music while I'm working. I've been wanting to quit my job, and after last night, I can't keep working there. I get to the museum at around 7.45, get changed, and then get to work at 8. The museum closes at 6, and so it's weird when I get there. The sky is dark, but not pitch black. It has this weird purplish grey hue to it, so the whole building has a weird dull colour. Most of the lights are off, and the only ones that are on are by the bathrooms and near the exits. Almost all of the exhibit lights are off, but there are some statues and paintings with the lights on them. It's probably for the guards to check up on. I just show up and do my job. I've been working there for the past three months. I don't think the amount of work I put in is equal to the pay I get but it's fine. I'm getting by. I bike to work, as I can't afford a car, plus it's good exercise. The museum looked bigger on the inside than it did on the outside. There's so much space, you couldn't believe it. Huge halls, lined with tall marble pillars. The ceiling had murals of angels, gods, and a bunch of other religious depictions. It's crazy how massive the place was. It's kept under constant security, I can't even fathom how expensive half the stuff is in this place. There were some security guards that go by each exhibit, about four or five, and they just walk around patrolling the area. It's nice, because it's not as scary as it would be if I were alone in that place at night. I got to know one of them one night. I forgot his name. We talked about our favourite paintings and how scary this place is at night. I'm glad I wasn't the only one who was terrified of the look the statues had on their faces in the dark. There weren't any guards this night though. When I made it to the front door, usually a guard would let me in, but the doors were unlocked. I didn't have the keys to the place, only the keys to the bathroom and the janitor's closet. When I got in, I went straight to the janitor's closet, which was in a little hallway next to the bathrooms. I unlocked the door and grabbed my work clothes. There's other people's stuff in there. The day janitors. They have their own side of the closet, and I have mine. I'm the only night janitor. There's about four or five that work during the museum's active hours, usually sweeping the steps in front of the museum, sweeping the floors inside and dusting. I got my keys, unlocked the men's bathroom, and started the change. I went into a stall took my sweatpants off, and struggled to put on my navy work pants. Once I got them on, I slipped my belt through and tightened it. I started to take my shirt off, but the bathroom lights turned off. It does this thing, where at night, there's a little motion detector the lights have, and it makes them turn off after a minute of not detecting motion. I had to get on the toilet and wave at the lights for them to turn on. Once I got done changing... I put on some yellow cleaning gloves and headed back to the closet. I grabbed some soapy detergent, the mop bucket, along with a mop, and got to work. I was by myself. I didn't think about it, and I didn't really notice it. My music was at full volume, and I was just cleaning. I started to notice no one was with me when an exhibit light turned off. It was way off in the distance. I thought I was just seeing things or my mind was playing tricks, but I knew the light was on earlier, since I passed the statue on my way in. I took my headphones off and called out, but no one answered. I assumed a guard had turned it off, but someone would have answered. The guards liked to talk to each other a lot. There'd be no reason for them not to respond. I called out again. Just the faint music from my headphones playing, that was all. It was so silent. I was just hoping that the guards had to go somewhere or were doing something and would be back soon. 
Maybe they were going to play a prank on me. That was my hoping. I put my headphones back on and continued mopping. After about two hours of mopping, I got the window cleaning bottle and a rag and started on wiping down the windows. That's when the light turned back on. I was closer to it, and this time, the statue was gone. It had just vanished. I knew it wasn't the security guards messing with me. The exhibits and painting galleries weren't allowed to be tampered with by anyone besides the art restorer or conservator as far as I know. It just didn't seem real to me. I was just tired. That's what I brushed it off to. I was tired, but that's not what was happening. And then, another light went out. It was on the opposite side of the museum as the other one. Everything was slowly getting darker. I turned my phone flashlight on. I hadn't noticed earlier, but the lights outside had turned off, and so had the lights by the bathroom. I put my headphones back on and tried to avoid this terrifying situation. I wanted to leave, but I knew I couldn't. It was only 12 and I needed to finish my shift. I could just go to sleep after and forget this ever happened. While I was wiping the windows down, I thought I could see things moving out the corner of my eye. But when I turned around, it seemed to have stopped. Everything paranoid me. The twisting people in the paintings, the way the statues glared at me, the murals on the ceiling, looking down, mocking me. I was exhausted and I needed to finish my shift. I wasn't just about to give up because these stupid paintings and sculptures making me uncomfortable. After I was done cleaning the windows, which was about 1.30, I noticed one of the statues looked out of place. I had memorized which statues were where. Everything seemed odd, just slightly different. The faces and the statues were different, or so I thought. I couldn't see it well, so I pointed my phone at it to illuminate it. The eyes were empty, and his mouth was shaped in a disgusting smile. I thought I saw crooked teeth, but I didn't get a good look. My phone died immediately after. I ran to the exit. I knew what the statues looked like. I'd seen it during the day. This was not it. Its whole face had lit up, except for the eyes. Just dark holes in their place. I just had an hour and a half. I could leave, then quit the next day. That was the plan. I took a deep breath and went back to the janitor's closet. I grabbed my normal clothes and went to the bathroom. I flicked the lights on and headed to a stall with an open door. I slammed it shut and pulled the lock. I knew no one would walk in or anything. It was just a force of habit. I closed the toilet lid and sat down. I put my normal clothes on the toilet paper dispenser and started to take my work pants off. As I was struggling to undo my belt, I heard a noise from outside the bathroom. It was of a door opening, and then the door shut. I waited about 10 seconds and called out, Hello? Is anyone there? After getting no response, I waited another 10 seconds. The lights went out, and I held my breath. A creak echoed, and a layer of light spread throughout the bathroom and dissipated. The door closed with a large thud. I was stuck in the bathroom with something else. I closed my eyes and hoped for the worst. Then the lights turned back on. The blank, grey, expressionless face of a statue stared back. Its face was perfectly still. His stone hands were gripped onto the top of the stall door. I wanted to cry. I didn't know where to go. I was so still. It was the longest minute of my life. And then, the lights went out again. I managed the courage to crawl on the bathroom floor and get under the stall next to mine. I felt around and realized the door to the stall was open. I darted out and was met with a wooden thud of the bathroom door. I yanked it open and shut it as hard as I could on my way out. I immediately locked the bathroom with my keys and ran to the museum exit, wiping the sweat and tears from my face. 
I got to the front of the museum and pulled on the doors. But they were locked. I didn't have the keys to open them. I kept pulling on the door, but I was met with a small click every time. I ran back to the janitor's closet in a panic. I looked around and noticed that a couple of the statues had gotten closer to me. I know I'm not crazy now. I know for sure. I know all of that wasn't in my head. My brain wasn't playing tricks on me. I tried getting out every single way possible. I ran to the emergency exits and they were chained up. I tried every single exit, every single door and nothing would budge. I decided to give up and locked myself in the janitor's closet until someone showed up to the museum. I spotted a fire extinguisher on the wall and opened the case it was in. If anything went bad, I could use it as a weapon. I grabbed my keys and prepared for the wait. I shut the door and crammed myself into the small room. I shoved the key into the lock and turned it until it clicked. I pulled the key out and sighed in relief. The smell of chemicals and dirty clothes filled my nose. I felt like I was going to puke. That feeling went away when I heard something coming from the room next to mine. It was coming from the bathroom. Thud, 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 thud. I held the fire extinguisher as tight as I could. It was the statue. It wanted out. I had to deal with this noise for a good ten minutes. My head hurt and I felt dizzy. I don't know what happened, but I remember waking up. I didn't remember passing out though. I thought it had to have been morning. I didn't hear anyone, but I thought it was safe to check. I slowly unlocked the door and cracked it open a bit. Everything was still dark. My brain was foggy and my vision was dark and fuzzy. I could make out a silhouette in the hall. It towered over everything and it didn't make any noise as it moved. No footsteps or anything. It was as if it slowly floated above the floor. Everything was quiet. The thudding in the bathroom had stopped. I opened the door a little more and the hinges screeched, echoing throughout the entire building. The statue stopped moving and turned around. I slammed the closet door shut. Or, I tried to at least. I looked up to see a pair of shiny, marble hands over the door, blocking it from entering back into the frame. That same face from the bathroom, devoid of life, hollow and soulless. I kicked the door open and ran. I didn't know where I was going to run. I ran as fast as I could, past the figure in the hall and into the main part of the museum. Every statue was gone, off of where they were supposed to be. I knew the museum well. I could find another place to hide and hopefully they wouldn't find me. As I ran frantically throughout the museum, I noticed something I didn't before. Way in the back of the museum were the escape exit stairs. I sprinted at the door and rammed my hands into the bar as hard as I could. There was something blocking it on the other side. I kept pushing and pushing until it slowly started opening. Every time I pushed, the door opened more and more. I looked behind me and saw the entire room covered with stone people. And they were looking at me, slowly moving towards me. I backed up and slammed into the door with all of my weight. The push bar let out a satisfying click as it opened up and I kicked the door closed behind me. The room I had entered enveloped me in darkness. I couldn't find my way to the stairs. I fumbled around, trying to find my way out. I reached out and touched the metal railing. Then I found a step, then a second step. I could see through the window on the emergency door. The statues were getting closer and closer. I ran up those stairs as fast as I could until I saw light. One foot after the other, I got closer to being away from those monsters. I could see the moonlight coming from the rooftop door. I was a couple steps away. I was about to make it. And then I felt something grab my foot. It was so cold. Its face was barely visible. 
but it had a huge grin. The statue's grip tightened, and its smile grew wider. I tried tugging, but it only got tighter. I swung at its hand with a fire extinguisher, but before I could hit it, I tripped and slammed my head down into the step in front of me. And suddenly, as I made my way up, I was dragged down. My face hit each step on the way down with a thump. There was a terrible metallic taste in my mouth and my nose was wet with blood. I couldn't see it, but I knew. I had finally reached the bottom. I didn't feel like moving. I held the fire extinguisher closer, cradling it like a baby. I looked up. The door in front of me was bombarded with dozens of silhouettes, gazing at me. My muscles were fatigued, but I tried my best to lift the fire extinguisher up. Then I brought it down onto my ankle, and then again, and again. I screamed in agony as I slammed the fire extinguisher down on the statue's hand, its grip tightening with every hit. I lifted it behind my head and brought it down onto my foot, breaking most of the stone hand's fingers off. The statue screeched and stumbled back. My ankle felt as if it had broken, and I crawled slowly up the stairs, back towards the light. I pushed the door open and stumbled onto the roof. The sun had just started to rise, and I laid down, wiping the blood from my nose. I took one more look back at the door. It was open just a sliver. The face of a cold, dead, stony face, looking back. I don't know what happened between then and now. I've been in a hospital bed for the last couple of hours. And earlier, the police wanted to ask me some questions. They told me they had found the bodies of five security guards in the women's bathroom. They asked me if I knew what happened. I told them about the statues. I told them everything that happened. They didn't believe me. They think I'm crazy. They think I killed those men. But I know what happened that night. I know what I saw.